よろしくお願いします。All right. The future of WordPress. So, this is a pretty big topic.、Um, when I was initially asked to talk about it, I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to, going to, to speak about.、Um, but I think together, let's talk through some different things that have been going on in the project and、uh, some ideas on where things could go.、Um, as just a quick disclaimer up front these are all my thoughts and opinions, not anything official from the project or anything like that.、Uh, so, take that, take that as you may. Um, I think when folks usually talk about the future of WordPress,、uh, when I've been to talks、uh, that are kind of titled like this in the past, I've heard a lot about, about headless WordPress. So, where WordPress or something else is, is using the information、uh, from WordPress、uh, via an API or, or something like that. And I do actually think that those、uh, uses are super interesting. So, I'm going to start talking about that、uh, briefly. Um, and how that sort of broadens、uh, gradually what WordPress is used for and changes the way that we think about WordPress.、Um, th- from a couple of years ago, I really like this,、uh, this presentation、um, from、uh, Hide san about、uh, the way that uh, uh, using Alexa to pull information from WordPress、uh, because it takes、uh, WordPress and、uh, Basically, it takes an emerging technology and then connects that with WordPress in a way that at least I certainly hadn't, hadn't thought about it. It's an integration with the REST API. I think it's a really good、uh, implementation there. And it's、uh, at the edge, definitely,、uh, especially when, it was first, when this was、uh, first released, of what WordPress is used for. Another really cool example、uh, that I saw kind of recently is、uh, Anthony Burchell's work. On extended reality and WordPress. So he's been doing some work on integrating WordPress with,、uh, with VR and AR systems and things like that to do different stuff. So, like, this is an example of what、uh, a post might look like、uh, extended back out、uh, about, about Mars. And、uh, this is all open source, so you can also go in there if you want to play around with it a, a little bit, then、uh, that's on GitHub and you can take a look.、Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. He's also working on another one、uh, that is an AR music creation app、uh, called Broken Place. And、uh, this, I don't think, is, is quite released yet, but there are some videos if you want to, or if you go to uh, the, the、uh, WP Tavern link or search even just, for, or just go to brokenplace.com, you can see a video example. And it's kind of neat. You can look around、uh, with a cell phone and you can choose. The、uh, instruments that you want to play by looking around wherever you are. And the way that it connects with WordPress is that it uses WordPress as a back end. I mean, I at least would never guess that it used WordPress、uh, looking at the application. But it can save、uh, music that different people are, are generating and、uh, combine them so people can collaborate and、uh, saves that in the back end. So I think that's pretty cool. I guess all this to say that I think that、uh, diversity of application matters when it comes to WordPress.、Uh, to use, to、uh, use WordPress in sort of the broadest way possible. And I think it shows how much a certain platform can stretch to support emerging technologies in the future. I think it also applies here to diversity of users and folks that are developing with it. The wider variety of folks that use software. The、uh, broader that knowledge is that can be shared with the community、uh, to inform future direction.、Um, so I don't see this、uh, in this sort of talk very often, but I- I'm going to go ahead and do it Let's,、uh, to set up sort of the rest of our conversation. It is possible that in the future WordPress may fail. Yeah, no,、uh, technologies tend to run their course until something、uh, that fits the need better comes along. And so I think this is important to think about because this is not the ideal, this is not what we want. At least I'm going to go ahead and assume that folks coming to a WordCamp, this is not the future that you want. This is not the future that I want.、Um, I think the alternative for this that would be ideal would,、uh, for、uh, WordPress fulfilling its mission of democratizing publishing is that WordPress changes. And、uh, what I mean by this is that as technology emerges, I think the extent 
to which WordPress can accomplish this mission is, is going to depend on its ability to adapt. Uh, right now, uh, democratizing publishing looks like uh, very similar to what, what WordPress looks like, uh, but already is, in, is starting to include things that probably WordPress doesn't do natively yet, like uh, perhaps uh, better video support or things like that, that folks would really like to be able to publish in an easier fashion. And I imagine that there are lots of these things that I can't even imagine at this point. So to me, this ability of WordPress uh, as not only a project, but as a community to evolve uh, is how we continue into the future so that WordPress continues to succeed. So to start, let's take a look at WordPress, where WordPress is now and how well WordPress is set up to change over time. WordPress is definitely growing, and this is an indicator that a lot of folks talk about uh, in terms of uh, future success. So. Let's chat about a few of the different ways that, that uh, at least uh, I see WordPress is growing. I think the clearest metric is an install count. So earlier this year, uh, it was announced that uh, WordPress was 33.4% uh, of installs on the web, and this is up from 30% last year. Uh, the WordPress.org about page uh, has, has also been updated to say that WordPress is now over 35%, which is super exciting uh, to increase by 5% of the internet in a year. I don't know, I can't even, that's hard for me to imagine. So short of something catastrophic, I don't, like, I don't think that this is going to change suddenly. So one of the benefits of, of the open web and of WordPress is that all of these sites are, or at least many of the sites, are hosted independently. And so all of those folks have the freedom to continue to, to develop those um, on their own. So this is cool. I think that it gives WordPress uh, a lot of runway to be able to adjust. And it also provides some of that uh, increased, as there are more folks, increased diversity of application and increased diversity of users that we were talking about. One of the difficulties that comes uh, from a project uh, this big is that it's kind of hard to steer such a big ship. So uh, for WordPress to, uh, to succeed, to change, it has to have those resources and resources vision and organization to be able to change direction. So let's start out uh, with, uh, with communication of vision. So during the last couple of years, uh, Matt Mullenweg, who y'all are, uh, many of y'all are probably familiar with, but for those who are not, is one of the co-founders of WordPress um, and has been uh, leading the project for some time, uh, has uh, taken a more vocal and forward lead in communicating vision. And I'm really excited about this. So I think that there's a lot of WordPress growth in project organization that's happening. Uh, last, at last year's State of the Word, which is a, an annual uh, speech that Matt gives about sort of what's going on with WordPress, uh, what he might expect to come next, and plans for the future, uh, he detailed uh, basically the next steps for WordPress. So first, and ending last year, uh, there was a new editor that was released that moved, uh, called Gutenberg, so that's what, that's what uh, this is, that changed the editing experience uh, within, a, within uh, the single post from a tiny MCE to a new uh, block format where, where uh, things are more based on uh, objects in, in a page or post rather than, rather than uh, text. And there are some next phases that are coming up. So uh, this, this is where we are right now. We're in phase two. And this is slowly starting to move uh, outside of that post content and to focus on customization. Uh, it's worth noting that any, so I've made sure to include uh, links at the bottom of most of the slides that are here because one of the cool things to me at least about the WordPress community is that all of this information is open. So if you want to know about uh, future plans, or if you want to know about what's happening in organization, how decisions are made, things like that, you can always go and you can see uh, in, in public posts and in videos and in things like that uh, exactly what's happening, and you can get involved. So the link that's at the bottom here will take you to that talk, so you can watch it if you like, and I'm reasonably sure that there are subtitles there too that are translated, uh, both for that one and for this year's. 
the next one that's coming up uh, is, is phase three. I don't know exactly when this is going to start, uh, but it's slated for afterwards. And this is collaboration, so this is kind of a neat one. Uh, the idea being to allow, kind of like in Google Docs, for folks to be able to edit a page or a post at the same time. And uh, Gutenberg helps set that up uh, by moving by moving editing to blocks. So I'm pretty excited about that. The one that I think, though, is probably going to change things the most is the one that came, that comes after that, uh, which is an official way to support multilingual websites in WordPress and to support multilingual uh, natively within WordPress and Gutenberg. And I think this one has been far too long coming, honestly, but I'm really, really excited to see this on the official project priorities, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to that process starting. So, after he announced these things, and I'm, basically I'm going to walk through a little bit here with organization and how things tend to, how to, things tend to flow, and fortunately we've got some really great examples from this year. So after this was announced, right afterward, uh, there was a post on uh, make.wordpress.org slash core from Matt about all of the projects and sort of how those, uh, those uh, plans and those focuses of the things uh, that were coming next might look in projects, and that, was starting, uh, and that started planning. So you can go and you can see all that. Just last night, there was another update. So this was because this was last year, and now we're at the, uh, about at the end of 2019, uh, Josefa, who is the executive director of WordPress, uh, posted uh, this update, and you can go and you can see what's happened this year with each of those uh, priorities and focuses. There's also a, a fairly new page on WordPress.org uh, slash about slash roadmap that has uh, the details of all of this and sort of where uh, the community and where the project is in, in planning and in execution, so... That's a cool place to see it. Connected with vision, there is also a lot of movement uh, in terms of experimenting with different uh, leadership models. And this isn't entirely new. WordPress as a project has been experimenting with exactly how to run the project uh, for at the very least as long as I've been a part of the project. Uh, Matt has been has been leading it, but the way that everything else gets run uh, with releases and with leadership and with uh, like basically how how everything is organized has changed a lot over time. I think this is really healthy to continue to evaluate and to see what's working best for the community at any particular time, and it's really encouraging to see this uh, as part of that. Uh, Josepha Hayden became the executive director. And, uh, and uh, Yoast also uh, had, I'm, and now I'm struggling because I didn't write down the exact uh, title, uh, was, a, a marketing, was a marketing lead. Uh, since then, uh, they both decided to do something different. And I think that's also really encouraging. There's a, there's a long post uh, that uh, Yoast made uh, after he stepped back from that position about all of the things that happened and about how he felt about it. And they decided to try something different. I think that continuing to that transparency in terms of how things are how things are working and in terms of continuing to change things so that they work better is, is really encouraging. Afterward, Josefa started posting other other details about thinking about uh, organization. Um, there's a post uh, that went up about uh, asking to see if folks were interested in being leads, and so. Uh, you can still go and comment on that uh, if you'd like. And they've, she's started to build out some uh, documentation and training for folks that are interested in leadership. And so that's something to look forward to. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that is still uh, in progress, but there are drafts that are available to read uh, whenever you would like. Following that, uh, she continued and did some research on the way that WordPress works right now. And so uh, basically the current way that uh, leadership is attained and that uh, folks, folks are able to get involved. And this is really interesting reading if you're interested in kind of knowing the way that things are. Uh, it's not necessarily the, things that, or the way that things should be. But it's uh, interesting to be able to, at least to me, it was interesting to see... Um, 
basically some of those uh, things validated in an, in an outside way and also to uh, let more folks who are not actively involved understand the process as it exists now and to be able to work within that in, in a better way. One of the proposals that came out of that uh, was to create a WordPress advisory board of various folks from uh, the ecosystem. And so that is one that is uh, being acted on and uh, is, is planned to move forward. And uh, yeah, these are all public posts. So definitely if you want to follow along with how that's working, um, then make.wordpress.org slash updates is a good place to do that. Another th place that organization has been experimented with uh, over time is, the, is how WordPress releases are run. And uh, I, I really do think that there's a lot of growth in WordPress contribution. So let's talk about how things look here. I'm going to draw a little bit from uh, my recent experience as uh, media focus lead for WordPress 5.3 and compare it with uh, some other uh, releases that I had uh, something to do with leadership in. So uh, let's step back a few years, back to 2014. This is the first time that I that I uh, did anything with leadership of a release. And uh, I started out as, as a deputy and ended with uh, Nason, or Andrew Nason, who was the main, uh, the primary lead at the time, um, um, basically uh, calling me a co-lead, which was very, very kind of him. So that's the only reason it's listed as two leads. But there were two people and, uh, and then 267 contributors, um, both uh, folks, both co-leads uh, based in the United States, uh, contributors, of course, from around the world. Uh, I would say that at any given time, uh, one thing that I think folks, I don't know if they talk about it that much or not, but there are often a lot of contributors that are listed for a release, and, and that's amazing. And uh, every single contribution is, is super important. One thing that's changed over time is the amount of folks that have time every day to spend a lot of time on it, though. Um, so, like, during WordPress 3.9, I would estimate that probably just, or probably around to just under 20 people actually had time that they could uh, give, you know, every day or something like that. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how that's changed. In the next release, uh, it was a, a, a team of three, uh, myself, um, uh, Mel Choice, and, and Adam Silverstein uh, as uh, design lead and uh, deputy, uh, respectively, and also still all based in the States. Uh, the numbers went up a bit. I don't think this was a high, but this was pretty close. So we went from a 267 to 298 um, in two years. Um, and... So the numbers, we can see that they're starting to slope up. It's not a serious change, and it's still three people. I can say that from this experience, it was often, it was really nice to have someone else to, to have that extra person to be, able to, uh, to be able to talk to and be able to help out with things when I didn't have the time. But it was still kind of a struggle to be just, uh, just a couple of people managing managing 298 uh, contributors. So I'm very happy to say that the most recent release, uh, WordPress 5.3, so that was just released this year, was a release team of 12. And this was completely uh, transformative for me and my understanding of the way that releases can work. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think this is way more healthy. So... Uh, in this case, every person had their own, usually uh, like a component uh, to work on, or uh, for instance, or marketing, or or, or running meetings, or uh, th that sort of a thing, with very de well-defined uh, tasks for each person to work on. And it was also a global team made of folks uh, spanning uh, spanning around the world. And so, if I found myself in trouble, and it was really late at night in Japan, and I had to go to sleep. <laughs> I could always say, hey, could you take care of this for me? And there was always someone that had just woken up um, or was already awake that was in Europe. Or, or um, uh, we also had, uh, had a contributor from Africa, and we had some, uh, some other folks from... Well, basically, it was across all the time zones. And so there was always someone that could say, oh, yeah, hey, please, go sleep, be healthy, I will help you. And so this is super encouraging for me, the... Just the room 
where uh, we were coordinating the release was about 18 people. That's pretty close to the amount of people that were spending their time all the time, like that had regular hours to spend on those other two releases, uh, three years, and, um, and now I'm missing my counting, six years ago. So this is super encouraging for me. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very optimistic on how, the, on how this has changed. So release teams, larger release teams started with, as an experiment in WordPress 5.0. And so they continued with 5.1 and 5.3. I really, really hope that this uh, continues to go because it's been, I, I think it's very, very good for WordPress. Um, another thing that uh, this, I think, was started in, at WordCamp Europe maybe three or four years ago is Five for the Future. And if y'all aren't already familiar, uh, this is uh, something that Matt proposed that uh, if you're working with WordPress that you spend um, 5% of resources um, in some way to help WordPress, uh, to help WordPress uh, succeed and continue to succeed. And so if you do regularly spend time on WordPress, whether or not you work for, uh, whether or not it's sponsored, even if it's in your spare time, you can go here to this link and you can sign up and you can have it displayed on a page where it shows uh, different people who are, who are contributing. And if you do work for a company that's sponsoring your time, companies can also uh, now go and sign up to the page and display all of their employees that are spending time on WordPress so that everyone can see uh, the commitment. And I think it's pretty cool to recognize companies in that way. Another place I think that's seen a lot of growth is, is in the editor and alluded to this a little bit earlier. So this is a screenshot from the WordPress 4.5 release video. I actually, I actually have no, no issues with the classic editor. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but I'm also really happy to see that uh, this is a screenshot from uh, 4.9. It doesn't look, or from not 4.9, from 5.3. And I, I am glad, of course, that, it, that I think this looks uh, quite a bit more modern, but also the APIs uh, allowing developers to expand functionality in WordPress via blocks, I think it's the biggest forward-looking change. It also changed the languages that are used in the background to ones that are more modern and kind of uh, expected in terms of, it makes it a lot easier to expand the editor than it was before. And so I think that that will, will help a lot with uh, increasing that diversity of, of application. It's also encouraged a lot of contribution. Uh, so I took this screenshot last night. I don't know if we've hit uh, 500 yet, but uh, this is 499 contributors just to the editor, just to Gutenberg so far. Uh, I, I said just a minute ago the editor represents growth in WordPress, and I think that's true, but perhaps a better way of talking about the Gutenberg project is that it is involved with growing, uh, with improving user experience and not just with the editor. Um, and that's due mainly to the phases that are coming up next. To expand to, uh, basically to handle more of what the admin panel currently handles. So one example of this, um, if you go to this URL, you can kind of see a longer video where where they talk about it just a little bit more. Um, but the idea is to expand what the editor does right now to allow full, full page, full site editing uh, directly in line. And I'll zoom into the top just a little bit. Uh, it was noted, uh, Matias, who, who wrote the page, and there are a lot of technical details on there too, if that's really interesting to you. Uh, you can go and see. And uh, he, he did note that the drop down at the top over there is probably, or you know, may not be the way that it, that it looks at the end. It was just to make it easy to uh, to give sort of a prototype, but I love how there are different modes that make it really easy for users that want to get different things done to get what they need to do, or to get done what they need to do. So if you want to design, it's really clear uh, how all the spacing works. But if you're just interested in editing, editing content, then you don't need to worry about uh, any of that part of the site. So I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty excited about, uh, about where this is going, and uh, yeah. Uh, if you have any comments to make, of course, uh, all of this is ongoing right now. So this is not already in WordPress. This is something that's being worked on in the GitHub repo right now. So if you'd like to contribute or you have, uh, you know, comments, questions, concerns, absolutely all of that can, can still happen and would love to have your help. 
I think another place that WordPress has seen a lot of growth uh, is in community. And I, I, this, is, this is even bigger than, than I, I think have the time to talk about, but I'm really excited to see uh, how much WordPress is growing. And uh, so there, this was in Matt's State of the Word uh, this year, that there were 141 WordCamps this year in the world. 34 of those are in new cities. So those, the new folks that we were talking about. And uh, 17 kids camps, which is neat to, to help introduce kids to, to WordPress. And 5,000 meetup events, or more than 5,000, which is really cool. Um, and I know a lot of each of those are, are, are in Japan and in, in, in uh, your communities. So thank you so much. Um, I think that this, that increasing this uh, diversity and contribution, be it in community or be it in core, or basically throughout the project, really matters. Um, I, I've, in, I've enjoyed seeing this in other places in core too, like uh, there was a, a focus in WordPress 5.3 uh, in increasing accessibility, because some folks noticed uh, late last year that there were some issues with accessibility in Gutenberg. And so there was a community-sponsored effort to go and to do an audit on all of Gutenberg to find uh, problems with accessibility. And, to, uh, and they went and created a bunch of tickets, a bunch of tasks to complete uh, in, in WordPress core to make those things better. And so there were a lot of fixes that went in, and there, were a lot, there was a lot of rallying around uh, helping out with that. And I definitely believe that the wider group, the wider, the wider set of folks with, with different backgrounds and from different places uh, helps, uh, it makes the team as a whole, it, makes all, it helps all of us uh, better know and understand this change. And I think that the more folks that are included, the better off the project will be. As a little bit of a, of a, a side note, but very much connect, I, it's not really a side note. I'd like to talk a little bit about APAC inclusion. So I think um, some teams, uh, like Polyglots and Community, have done this for a while. But I'm, I'm glad to see that there are some more changes in uh, the teams that I'm most connected with are, are core and hosting. And there have been some changes there recently to uh, not only have the information posted on, on the site, you've, you've been able to see for a while the, what things people talk about in meetings, but it's really hard to participate from Japan and uh, from, from the general area, from, from APAC. So uh, CORE has introduced a, a every other week uh, triage session that is at 2 p.m. JST, which is super great. I'm really excited about. And there's going to be one uh, with the hosting team that also gets added for that. And we're in working on having one of those for the media component as well. So, uh, I, it, so I really hope that that helps. If there are other places where people, uh, where uh, y'all feel that you're having trouble uh, connecting with, I, I would love to hear more about that. Um, I'd also personally love to see more opportunities for folks that that uh, primarily speak languages uh, other than English to more easily contribute. Um, one way that, I guess, as one example that I've seen this work before is with the, uh, the Japanese hosting community team, which I think is really, really cool uh, because the team gets together uh, in Japanese and then connects with the, uh, with the hosting community team in English. I don't know that that needs to be the language that's used forever, but because it, it, it's the one that's being used now, that allows folks that otherwise wouldn't be able to contribute to the conversation to contribute. And... I think that's interesting. I would love to see to see that improve. Uh, so uh, please please come uh, chat with me if you have any ide ideas on how we can improve it. Uh, so to summarize, um, I think that uh, change the places I'm some of the places I'm seeing change are in usage and application, uh, diversity of application, organization, contribution, user experience, and community. I think things are moving in a generally good direction, but what are some ways that it could improve? Um, when I was initially asked to talk about the future of WordPress, one of the things that I thought about was, why are you asking me this question? <laughs> because one person can't know, uh, can't know or guide everything that happens with WordPress. 
Uh, it, it depends on a global team around the world working together with it. So I'd like to turn this around a little bit. I'm interested in knowing what, what you're building with WordPress. What do your customers need, with, need from WordPress? Separately, what do you, what do you wish you could build? Or what, uh, but you, what do you currently need from WordPress but you don't have? And I, I, think, I think beyond needs, uh, what, I'd, what I'm most interested in hearing about is what you wish WordPress could be. What would the mission of democratizing publishing, if, if, if we didn't have WordPress and you just heard, we need to democratize publishing, what would be the thing that you would create? What would that look like now? What do you think it's going to look like? And uh, I ask that mainly because I, I do think that the, the, the future of WordPress is that change. Because uh, no matter what happens, the world is going to continue to change around WordPress. And how well WordPress accomplishes this mission is going to depend on how all of us respond. So put a little more clearly, this is a little cheesy, but I think that it, but I think that it follows. I think the, the future of WordPress uh, is in all of you. I think that the, the, the growth opportunities that I talked about, they're all, they all require having a large group of global folks working together. So including, including uh, everyone, including designers, users, implementers, developers, engineers, business folks. WordPress will evolve uh, based on uh, all of you who are here. And uh, the great thing about WordPress is that you get to decide uh, what your role is in it. Thanks so much. Arigatou gozaimasu. マイクさんありがとうございましたさてまだ少しだけお時間ごめんなさい Well, we still have some time for Q&A So, Mike would love to invite some of the questions from the floor So, if you have any question, please raise your hand and let us know Can I speak in Japanese? Well, Japanese is okay. I'm going to give you a microphone, so please wait a sec. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was quite interesting, made me think a lot. So, from Japan, what kind of contribution do you expect from Japan? I think. I don't think I have any expectations. I, I think that I, I would love, uh, I, of course, would love uh, to see folks feel like they can get more involved and to, and to gradually become more involved. I think already the Japanese WordPress community is doing a lot. <laughs> and I'm really, I, I'm very encouraged uh, by the community in Japan. Um, and so I think. I think it's less that I have any expectations on what might happen and more that I would love to make it easier. Because I think right now, especially with Core, it's very hard uh, to, to contribute. And so I would love to know ways that can make it easier. Does that answer your question? Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, the Japanese language has the second largest share in the world press. However, we are not catching up with the translating、um, lots of material. So, this、uh, may be、uh, the kind of inhibitor to increase our contribution from Japan. But anyway,、uh, do you have any other questions from the floor? The person in the back. It need to be a question. I, I included wishes on here on purpose. Hello, if, Mike. If you want to share what you,、uh, 
are excited to either see or wish you saw uh, from WordPress, I would love to hear that too. Hello, Mike. Uh, it, was good, it was a good presentation, by the way. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much. Actually, uh, I'm currently leading theme review team in WordPress.org. So uh, we are currently five, six representatives uh, which is, uh, who are leading theme review team right now. A uh, few months ago, we were planning to change the leads uh, because all of the previous leads are tired and want some rest, uh, and uh, they have been doing contributions since long. But actually, we call for the application, or we request it in our meeting that who want to be the next lead or who want to uh, join the team uh, as a lead or representatives, but no one is ready. So we need to request our previous lead to continue the same position. So uh, what do you think that um, people uh, who are interested in leading things or uh, doing WordPress things, uh, they are not ready to contribute so much a long time in for free, or there was some restriction that they are not able to join the team? What do you think? Um. So you mean if folks want to be able to contribute more, um, but they currently don't have the time or the resources to do so? Yeah, yeah. but our team is really saturated. It means they have been doing lots of time. So we call mm -hmm. for another leads, alternative leads. But there was, no, there was no one ready to take the position. What might be the problem or what might be the cause that no one is ready for uh, taking team review lead position? Well, I think I don't want to. Uh, I, I don't. I, I'm not a member of the team, and so I, I don't want to. Uh, so I, I, I don't know what the reasons exactly might be. Um, I know at least in the hosting community team. Maybe I'll talk about that one instead uh, because I'm not sure what's happening internally in that one. Although I would love to chat uh, about it uh, afterward. I, I meant to say that um, uh, you already said that mm. uh, WordPress have the training team as well. They provide the training, and uh, Joseph also write a post about who and to join the team. They can comment. You already said that. So. But uh, lots of people are actively involving in theme review team, but they are not ready to take the lead position. So what might be the reason for that, if you have any idea? Um, did, did, they, did you ask them? Yeah, we asked them, but um, we called them for uh, the lead position, but they are not ready to say that. They made some various reasons that I don't have time, sure. or yeah. I can't do it for free for the long time, so-so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a really common one, and uh, that's in in teams that I've worked with. I mean, I, I feel very privileged to be able to spend time um, on on WordPress. Uh, I I can't remember if you mentioned this at the beginning, uh, but I'm, my time is donated by GoDaddy, uh, is sponsored by GoDaddy. So I have that's the reason that I have time as much time as I do to work on WordPress, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I think that a lot of times, folks. Uh, want to contribute more, but they don't have enough. Uh, they, they don't feel like they have enough time or, or monetary resources to spend that time. And when it comes to that, I would love to see more. Uh, and I, I see this happening gradually. I would love to see more companies um, sponsor or reach out to those folks uh, to, to sponsor to uh, allow them to spend some more time. I think. Uh, as, as someone who has uh, previously been able to sort of offer sponsorship to folks, uh, it's also really helpful to know if people are in that position. And so I think being public about, you know, I could, I could, I could do this thing, but I can't for this reason, especially if it is money, is really, really helpful for companies in the WordPress space to know. Um, because a lot of times that's something that's, that's important to those companies and important to, to folks to help out with. I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. And I think we need to um, ask the big company like GoDaddy mm. uh, to, to, for supporting Team Review Team as well, I guess so. I would, I would love to see, I would love to see uh, GoDaddy uh, support uh, like e even more folks uh, working on WordPress, absolutely. And uh, it's, yeah, it's exciting to see, to see companies step up. Yeah, that will be fun, too. OK, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. 
あのしれっとあの今会話してましたけれどもコアコミッター You are the committer, right? I am a committer, yes <笑>コアコミッターとテーマレビューチームのリードのやり取りでございました<笑>こんなことがねこのワードキャンプ大阪この中で世界的な動きしかもネパールから来ていただいていてそして、えー、you, from, you, you, from US, right? Uh, originally. Originally. アメリカ出身のマイクさんがいらっしゃってっていうところでこういうやり取りが聞ける場もワードキャンプならではっていうところもあると思います。So because of time, we would like to conclude this session. So again, thank you very much, Mike.